was the house built by Ibrahim alayhi Later on Allah will command, turn in its direction. But the first reason Allah gave openly was that the Prophet ﷺ was sad. And now to make him happy, I'm changing the direction. In a direction that makes you happy. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the reason we pray towards the Qibla is it pleases Rasulullah. So so beautiful. Allah changed the Qibla for him. Did he even have to ask? No. Allah changed the Qibla. Turn your face then in the direction of Al Masjid Al Haram, the sanctified Masjid. When was the Kaaba built? And who built it first? Because in fact, there is a difference of opinion in this regard. Some historians, based on some narrations, those narrations are weak narrations, believe that the Kaaba was first built by the angels. And others believe that the Kaaba was first built by Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, when he was sent down to earth. There is a third opinion which believes that it was built by Sheath, peace be upon him, Adam's son. And there is a more right view which claims that the Kaaba was built first by Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. Allah the Almighty have pointed out to Ibrahim السلام, the site of building the Kaaba and designated for him where to erect the construction of the Kaaba. The story begins as follows. When Allah the Almighty blessed Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, finally with a child when he reached an old age and senility from Hajar, Allah the Almighty tested Ibrahim السلام, He ordered him to take Hajar and, uh, and Ismail, her son, the baby, was still being breastfed into the desert, into a barren place, an uncultivated place. Ibrahim السلام, used to live in Asham, so he took them far away to the place which was known as Bakka. When he deposited them in this barren land, as the Quran said, Hajar, peace be upon her, called upon Ibrahim السلام, and she said, are you gonna leave us here alone? But he never replied back. She asked him again and again, did Allah order you to do that? He answered in the affirmative, yes indeed he did. At that Hajar السلام, was in comfort. And she was assured, and she said, then indeed, we will never get lost. Allah will never let this happen. Ibrahim السلام, left back to Asham. Hajar and Ismail remained alone there until Allah the Almighty made it easy for them to survive. Then years later when Ismail grew up, and then Ibrahim السلام, was allowed to go and visit his son. And according to Abdullah ibn Abbas and the hadiths collected by Imam Bukhari, when they both met in Mecca, they hugged each other, they greeted each other. Then Ibrahim السلام, said to his son Ismail that Allah the Almighty has ordered me and commanded me to do something. Would you assist me in it? He showed willingness. What was it? It was to raise the foundation of the Kaaba. Saying both of them were invoking Allah the Almighty throughout the process of building the Kaaba, our Lord accept this from us. Indeed, you are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. It was Abraham and his son Ismail, peace be upon them, both who built the Kaaba. Then the Ahadith explained, Ibrahim السلام, was in a charge of building and putting the bricks on top of each other, while Ismail was in a charge of bringing the rocks and the stones, making sure that there are even bricks so that he would hand them over to Ibrahim and he will put them on top of each other without any binding materials, with no cement. So that is the original building of the Kaaba, no clay, no mud, no cement between the bricks in the beginning. He was shown by Allah the Almighty the pillars of the Kaaba, where he started building the walls by putting the bricks on top of each other. When the building of the Kaaba was getting higher and they didn't have ladders, so Ismail السلام, wrote him a stone in order to stand on top of it so that he can reach a higher level to add, put in the bricks on top of each other. As a result, it remained and it left 
a footprint again is the stone and this footprint remained until today this stone which had the footprint of Ibrahim is known as Maqamu Ibrahim the station of Ibrahim this stone which had the foot print of Ibrahim السلام, used to uh, be attached to the Kaaba, very close to the Kaaba. But because the Prophet وسلم, once prayed before it, Umar al-Khattab ordered that the stone should be uh, sent distance from the Kaaba in order to allow people to perform tawaf freely. So it was Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail who raised the foundations of the Kaaba. While Ibrahim and Ismail both were building the Kaaba, they were busy making this beautiful dua, which is, Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta sami'u al-alim. And when the Kaaba was built, Ibrahim would constantly stand on the side, look at the Kaaba from far away, see any angle that's out of line, any height that's higher than the other side, and constantly contemplating and thinking the best way that he could perfect the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now the Kaaba is built. But every corner of the Kaaba, four corners, they all look the same. So if you want to start circulating around the Kaaba, where are you going to start from? So Ibrahim told his son Ismail, or son, go and find me a rock different from all the rocks that you see. To put it in one corner, to distinguish the corner that this is the beginning of the Kaaba. Ismail was so tired. So he told his father, Oh father, I feel a bit lazy, tired. Ibrahim told him, get up and go and do this. So Ismail got up. And he went looking for rocks, rocks. And most of the rocks, or the stones, they all look the same. After a while, Ismail comes back. And he sees his father carrying this white rock to put it in a corner. But this white rock, where did it come from? So he told him, oh father, where did you get this white rock from? He said, I got it from the one that doesn't need you or gets lazy. Jibreel got it from me from the heavens. And that's the rock that we call the black rock. And now it's black. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it was white and it became black from the sins of people. And it's not as big as it used to be. Throughout years, they reduced a few tips here and there, fell down and was stolen in some areas. So it's smaller than the original size. The Kaaba has been built. The Hajar is in its corner. The house of Allah Azza wa Jal is there. The Kaaba <coughs> remained for a long time in the same shape with the same structure built by Ibrahim السلام, it was rectangular and later on something happened the Kaaba was made into a cube what happened was the Kaaba was starting to run down and like any other structure any building obviously it loses form and you need to rebuild you need to renovate it the leaders of Quraysh came and they were afraid to renovate the Kaaba to rebuild it they were afraid that maybe Allah will send upon them birds like that with, with stones of fire. But they encouraged themselves to do so. And what happened was, they gathered each other and they said, you know, most of our wealth, it comes from forbidden trade. So they said, we need to rebuild the Kaaba with only pure halal money. So they gathered the wealth and the only wealth they had, which they were so certain from their heart that it was pure, was enough to rebuild it as a cube. They didn't even have enough to build that last section as a rectangle. And there was the last rock, which is the, 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 the black rock. And they didn't know who's going to put it in. So they're almost have, about to have a battle over the black rock. And then one of them said, let's sleep next to the black rock. No one's allowed to touch it. And the next morning tomorrow, the first person that enters, we will tell him to judge and whatever he says will do. So they slept. And the next morning, they woke up and they saw a man coming in. The first man to enter. And they pointed and said, huh? they pointed, nodded to each other. This is the man. And they said, yep, we all agree. Who was it? It was a prophet Muhammad wasallam. Before he was a prophet. He was known for his nobility, his loyalty, his honesty, his peace loving nature, all of that. He connected, everybody loved him before he was a prophet. And they said, we all agree to him. He says, yeah, Muhammad, what do you say? He said, I say that 
I take off my cloak and each one of you grab a section and you all carry the stone to the corner and that way no one can feel superiority over another you all had equal share and then I will take the rock off with my hands and put it in so what did he say to Aisha after that he said to her don't you know that when your people built the Kaaba they shortened it from the foundation of Ibrahim salam. so I said Aisha says then why do you not return it to its original foundation of Ibrahim the Prophet answered were it not for their sentiment attached to the tradition of Kufr until recently I would have changed it there was a companion by the name of Abdullah ibn Zubayr and Abdullah ibn Zubayr he had a rule for a little while after the death of the Prophet after the Khulafa Abdullah ibn Zubayr rebuilt the Kaaba he wanted to rebuild the Kaaba the, the original way as a rectangle and what happened was <coughs> he couldn't do that and he was killed in the year 73 of Hijrah by Al-Hajjaj who was a commander of the Umayyad Khalifa and the Khalifa was Abdul, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan and he wrote to Abdul Malik ibn Marwan he wanted to build the Kaaba in its original form and he went and did it but they thought that Abdullah ibn Zubayr built the Kaaba that way on, according to his own choice they didn't even know about the hadith of the Prophet so they ordered for, for it to be demolished and built as a, as a cube the Khalifa realized that it was actually a hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha that the Kaaba the Prophet was going to make into a rectangle so he regretted it but the Kaaba stayed as a cube until the Khalifa Mahdi ibn Mansur he wanted to rebuild the Kaaba as a rectangular and in that time was Imam Malik rahmatullahi and this Khalifa said asked Imam Malik should I rebuild the Kaaba as a rectangle as the Prophet ﷺ intended to do so? But Imam Malik said to him, I fear that kings may start playing around with it. And so it remained as a cube until today, as you see it. Let's go with the common narration of Al Wahidi. He says, At the time of the victory of Mecca, Muhammad وسلم, entered Mecca, and one of the most important things to be done was to get to the Kaaba, to open it, to remove the idols, and so on. This was an extremely important event. When he entered Mecca to Mukarramah, he actually entered with so much of humility that his head was so low it was close to the neck of the camel. One of the first things he did was he asked for the key of the Kaaba and he asked for Uthman ibn Talha was because this man's family from generations had been responsible for the key of the Kaaba everyone knew that this family holds the key Uthman ibn Talha when he heard that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was entering he climbed up above the Kaaba trying to hide and he had locked the Kaaba and he took the keys with him so according to the narration of Al Wahidi he became a little bit aggressive. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu took it by force. And he rushed down and he gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the key. They opened the Kaaba, mashallah, they went in. As he came out, he met his uncle Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. And he says, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, we are responsible for the Zamzam. We are responsible for quenching their thirst, subhanallah. And if you were to give us this key, the honor would be doubled. The Prophet ﷺ at that juncture received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, the verse was revealed inside the Kaaba. Narration of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he says, when the Prophet ﷺ was coming out of the Kaaba, he was busy reading this verse and we had never heard it before, meaning it was revealed inside the Kaaba. So what is the verse? Verse number 58 of Surah An-Nisa. Allah instructs you to return that which is entrusted to those whom it belongs to. So the Prophet wasallam called Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and says, go back to Uthman ibn Talha. Call him and apologize to him because of the manner in which you had treated him earlier and give him back the key. So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu goes to Uthman ibn Talha and the man was concerned he was worried because moments earlier there was a little bit of harshness in dealing with him and now suddenly 
there was an apology, there was some beautiful speech, and the Prophet ﷺ's instruction was fulfilled. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu goes and returns this beautiful key, and he says, O oh Uthman, this is the key. And he's surprised. He said, moments ago, you were quite aggressive, and now you are apologizing and coming with this key. What's happening? He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed verses regarding you. And according to the narration of Al-Wahidi, that is the point where Uthman ibn Talha accepted Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, one step further, he told Uthman ibn Talha, and this is according to all the narrations, he said, nobody shall take this key from you and your progeny up to the end of time, except the one who is an oppressor. To this day, the same family holds the key of the Kaaba.